to, to present a little bit my, it's not really uh, even work, my work in progress uh, before, uh, before such, uh, before an audience with, with such an erudition, which uh, um, I, can only, I can only dream of. And so uh, today, I, uh, as you know, I have been uh, working on the problem of grades in, in Tangled for a moment. And so uh, today, I will just uh, pick up where I left uh, off back in Hamburg, where, uh, because I didn't treat the thing about the grade two. And so today I'll talk about it, and I'll talking a little bit. I'll be also talking a little bit about Chinese also. So uh, I call the I call Hexi Late Middle Chinese the Chinese dialect that is uh, that is spoken by Tangus and the uh, and the, the Chinese dialect uh, that the Tangus learn or learn Chinese from. So uh, let's start with uh, some basic uh, information. Uh, so mm, the most interesting to me uh, category, uh, phonological category in Tangled is uh, the start of grades. So uh, usually, uh, by usually I mean uh, by Gongfang Cheng, uh, usually we, tr we reconstruct uh, three grades for Tangled by, uh, uh, on the basis of a conjunction of rhyme ordering in dictionaries. So in dictionaries like the, like the Wen Hai or the C of characters, and, uh, and, and we have other lexicographic materials that present the, the exactly the same order of, of, rhyme, of rhyme categories. So, 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 so it's something that is very much agreed upon uh, by the ten good philologists the, the, themselves. And the other thing is the, uh, the ten good Chinese trans transcription evidence. Uh, there is a slight asymmetry between uh, the Chinese to Tangled side and the Tangled to Chinese side, but uh, for uh, for the great problem, it's uh, it's okay. So, um, as an example, we take the rhymes R thirty four, so wow, R thirty four to R thirty seven, and we see that so the first rhyme in this group transcribes. Uh, almost only Chinese syllables in, in the Chinese grade 1 and the second rhyme in this group, 35, transcribes only Chinese characters of the uh, grade 2 and the, uh, the remaining two uh, rhymes, 36 and 37, uh, more or less indiscriminately transcribes Chinese grades uh, three and four. In fact, these two uh, are in are in near uh, complementary distribution. And if we look really hard at the near part, we see that uh, they are uh, usually artificial. And we can and we can uh, for most of these uh, uh, these groups like this, we can make a case for uh, for real complementary distribution. So. Uh, I agree with Gong Huang Cheng in reconstructing only three grades. So the traditional, uh, so the traditional reconstruction of the value of the grades is uh, is made by Sofronov uh, on um, basically on the uh, on as a mirror image uh, of the Chinese reconstruction at his day. Uh, so so he considered uh, the. The grade thing, uh, basically a, a thing of medials. So the first grade uh, has no medials. The second grade has some kind of a weak yod, uh, uh, and the third grade has some kind of strong yod. This is uh, carried over uh, uh, as verb and by uh, by Gu Huang Cheng. So you have uh, the the. Uh, uh, represented by a vocalic E in Gong Huang Chen's re reconstruction and the, uh, and the uh, stronger yod represented by, uh, by a real yod. Uh, this creates the problem that it's, uh, it's very difficult to, pron uh, to pronounce ye and ye. It's, what's the difference between ye and ye? Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I, uh, I can pronounce a, a lot of things but uh, this one is a little bit difficult. So Gu Huang Cheng uh, made a decision to, uh, to, to uh, he basically invented an, an alphony uh, 
where in grade three is uh, the the vowel is slightly raised. So you have a, ye, and ye. What is pronounceable? A little bit pronounceable, and. Uh, but uh, sadly, it is not supported by the transcription evidence. So uh, my favorite example is just the is just the uh, basic mantra in Mahayana Buddhism, Om Mani Padme Hum. And if we look at the uh, the the usual reconstruction, we have Om Yani Pyami Hum. And so uh, 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 clearly, uh, it doesn't work, and it needs to be uh, uh, updated and. Uh, uh, well, uh, I have the chutzpah to consider uh, the updating basically done. Uh, so, uh, based, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, well, uh, let's start with a little bit of context. So, uh, Tangut, uh, uh, it is known already at the time of Wolfenden and Wang Xingru that Tangut is a Changic language, uh, closely related to languages like Chang, to Minyak, to Garangic languages. But at this time, uh, those languages uh, didn't uh, uh, are not very well described. So uh, basically, uh, to in order to to be able to do the uh, the nice kind of comparison, you need uh, really do uh, great dictionaries of those languages, and you uh, um, like for, uh, for uh, with with um, thousands of words before you can really get uh, get to something. So now uh, with Guillaume Jack, uh, who has uh, worked uh, for. For more than a decade on, on Japuk, he has a very great dictionary of Japuk and he has looked for all the possible cognates and he found uh, uh, some, some, three, uh, some 300 of it. Of them, so uh, we uh, so now uh, we can we have something very uh, very solid to to work on, which is the which is the cognates between uh, Tangut and Japuk Garo. So based on a uh, comparison with uh, Japu Garong, which I will not explain uh, today, uh, 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 I'll, I'll, happily, I'll gladly redo the, the presentation I have done in Hamburg and elsewhere if you, if you want it. And, and so uh, basically uh, what I suggest is that there is a, a phonological distinction of uvularization. So between uvularized vowels, uh, which are pronounced like Ba, ba, and uh, non uvularized uh, plain vowels, which are, which are, uh, which are pronounced ba, ba. So the distinction between grade one and grade three, which were, uh, uh, which were reconstructed before as ba versus bia, is now reconstructed as ba versus ba. This. Uh, this distinction of uvularization uh, triggers an allophony for the velar, so basically the yayin, the yayin initials, uh, uh, between a and ka. Uh, we, uh, it is very clear that uh, grade 2 is uh, uvularized as grade 1, but uh, uh, we don't know what the what the thing distinguishes uh, grade two from grade one. So for now, I'll I'll write an R for grade two, and we'll uh, have a look uh, in detail. Uh, so uh, where does the uvularization in Garangit come from? Well, the first uh, the first origin is uh, what I call the primary uvularization. Uh, it, it must be re, it must be reconstructed back to uh, proto changic and it uh, has some correspondences uh, within, within uh, among other Sino Tibetan languages, but uh, it's too early to to say anything serious about it. Uh, however, if we do uh, if we just look at changic languages, the thing is quite clear. So, for example, uh, for uh, pus non, uh, it's uh, it's ball you will arise. Tangut, and in Zbu Garong, the language I'm working on, is Tazbu, Tazbu, with a vilarized uh, or uvularized vowel, which I call emphatic vowel. And we have the same thing in Minyan, the language which, uh, which uh, shares the name of Tangut, it's Pa, Pa. So for Willow, uh, it's uvularized in Tangut, and it's emphatic in Zbu, etc., etc. 
And we also have what, uh, so this is the primary regularization, which is inherited from proto -Changic. We also have secondary regularization. So the, basically the root uh, wasn't uh, regularized at the stage of proto -Changic. But now, uh, uh, there are other things which went to the, uh, to the syllable and which makes it uh, uvularized. So for example, if we have a uvular, if we have a uvular coda, so for example to we, which is da uh, in Japan, da da there's the re, and this re goes to the this re goes to the uh, syllable, and so we have not la but la la. Uh, for snake, uh, it is it, uh, it is the same ga, but but in the first position. So basically, we we should have a um, um, po or something for snake, but it's po, and this ra ra this uvular element goes onto the syllable and makes it po. Uh, and not only uvulars, but uh, velar elements, basically velar uh, codas, and N, which uh, I hypothesize as uh, having turned into some kind of uh, nasalized wu, then to, then to this g. And these also uh, make secondary uvularizations. So what do we find here? We find the, the, the ubiquitous pattern the basic conspiracy in the in the in the historical phonology of tango, which uh, Mark Miyake uh, describes as compression. Uh, I have changed his um, sorry, I have changed his uh, definition a little bit. And for me, what is compression? Compression is that uh, materials, phonological or phonetic materials, around the syllables. So, for example, the uh, uh, codas or pre-initials or even some kind of minor or even some kind of minor syllables they all went to the, the, the main part of the syllable and become some kind of pan-syllabic feature which, is, uh, which, has, which works for the syllable as, as a whole uh, that is, for example, how uh, how we usually explain the origin of, uh, of retroflexes in entangled. So you have uh, so you have pre-initial R or uh, or coda R, which which just uh, extends to the syllable as a whole, and uh, and it's uh, and itself it has disappeared. So this is the compression, and so the uvularization entangled uh, fits very well into this uh, great picture of uh, compression. So, uh, so we have uh, left the, uh, the second, uh, the grade two, uh, unexplained. Uh, it has something to do with R, so, so I will write it as a, uh, as a R in capital letters, but what is it? Uh, first, uh, we'll look at this transcription evidence for, for this great R. Uh, so, uh, for the Chinese transcription, there, there isn't much to be said. Uh, first, it, it transcribes a grade 2. Second, it transcribes a grade 3 with a zhuangzu shengmu, so with a, a, a ritual flex fricative or affricate as an initial. <coughs> uh, the, Tibetan, uh, the Tibetan transcription is more interesting. Uh, I think it's for the uh, for the hand B and hand D. Uh, am I right? Uh, where where we have uh, uh, the the vowel A in the second in grade two transcribed as R. So, for example, uh, this character, which is uh, which is Ba, is transcribed as Ba, uh, and this is uh, and you never find. Uh, Find the first, find the grade one syllable in, in comparable, in comparable circumstances transcribed with an R. Uh, well, uh, that's all we have got uh, for the transcription material, so it's quite hard to interpret. Uh, the, it's more interesting to consider the or, the etymology, the etymological origins of the grade two capital R. 
So the first origin of the grade two capital R is euralization plus a medial R. So for example, uh, if you have ka without the R in Japuk, you will have ka in first uh, in grade one in in Tangu. But in fact, because there is an R, it's ka, it's ka, so the R is reflected as the grade two. Also for willow, it's zimbri or zimbr, and it is uh, uh, duly reflected as. Uh, as boil uh, with this uh, with this uh, capital R for white uh, here the uh, the here the the uvularization is not primary but comes from the coda M however because there is the R so coda M brings uvularization and uvularization plus uh, medial R brings second degree, uh, brings grade two. Uh, the same uh, medial R in non uvularized con uh, uh, context just disappeared. So, for example, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is a word uh, which is um, shared by almost every Chinese language, so it's quite useful. Gr uh, or gru, which means sinew, le uh, tendon. It is uh, there. Is, there is an R, but it has disappeared because it's not uvularized. So the same thing for uh, for clear water, which is angri and just gi. There's no there's no difference between uh, gi and gri. Uh, so that was the first origin for uh, for the second degree uh, for for, uh, for grade two in Tangut. Uh, and now things get more interesting. Uh, here we have the R, which is uh, which has an uvular initial with the vowels E, A, and U. So basically, uh, uh, if anyone, uh, if any of you speak a language with uvulars, you know that it's very difficult to pronounce T. T. It's it's almost impossible to do T um, with uh, with a normal E. So, uh, so uh, there is always some kind of uh, intervening, uh, uh, intervening uh, transitional element between uh, uvular initial and uh, high vowel or front vowel. And uh, uh, however, in Tangut, this thing is uh, categorized as the same thing as the other origins of grade two. Uh, so, uh, that is why I think that uh, in Miyake's uh, hypothesis that uh, 104 and 204 are grade two rhymes and not grade one rhymes is correct because basically uh, um, you have other you have other initials in 101 and 201 but you have almost uh, uh, only velar, in fact uvular initials in 102 and 104 and 204. Uh, so the R thing here is some kind of transitional element which has a low vowel. Uh, in one of the Gerangic languages, which is a cross variety of cross gap spoken in the in Wozi, we have the same thing. So for difficult, which is nga, you have narai, narai, narai. However, a, a normal word with a in Japuk is just uh, reflected as E in cross gap and E uh, third uh, 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 grade three E in Tangut. V and Narai. And why we have this Narai? It's because it's difficult to say Narai, Narai. If you say Narai and you don't pay very much attention, it becomes Narai. The last, uh, the last origin for uh, for. For the second, uh, for the grade two in Tangut, is retroflex initials. Uh, I think I don't have the time to explain it uh, clearly here, uh, so I've just uh, declared by fiat that uh, that the that the uh, the the shibboleths, so the the Changzu, the Changzu uh, 
initials are pronounced uh, are pronounced retroflex um, before before a uber, before a uberalized um, rhyme. So what does this say? Uh, it means that uh, the uh, because we have um, because uh, shibboleths are only compatible with grade two but not grade one. It means that uh, the R, the, the, the capital R, is some kind of transitional element be, be, between uh, a retroflex sound and, uh, and a vowel, and, uh, and uh, any vowel. Uh, so for those uh, of you who, uh, who, who, would look, who would love to look at a little bit at the argument, I leave it here. And let's go to the summing up. So in order to recapitulate the evidence about the capital R, uh, so, uh, so what does the capital R feel like? First, there is some kind of uh, uh, throttiness or backness because it is, on, it is only in urealized context and it's, uh, and it's a transitional vowel between a uvular and a high or a front vowel. So it must be something like ah or aw oh or a ah or something like that. That's uh, first. That's uh, uh, that's our first uh, intuition. The second intuition is that the sound has an R-like character. So uh, otherwise, it's impossible to to explain the R in the Tibetan transcription, and, and it will be difficult to is explain the also the origins. Uh, with uh, uh, in in uh, R and with retroflexes. However, uh, we also know that it's not a real R because first we have the medial R in Tibetan, and this and this never transcribed as a medial R in Tibetan. Also, it's uh, in the uh, in the how do you call it in the uh, in the mantras. Uh, if there is if there is a word like pra and it will never be uh, and you never find a great two character used to transcribe pra. Uh, in fact, you have a very very few great two characters in mantras. Basically, it's used to transcribe the long vowel a ah, and nothing else. And thirdly, if it's really an uh, r, it's impossible to uh, to explain why it becomes kri kri kri. Now it's it's not okay. P becomes I. That's okay. P becomes Cree. It's, it's, it's strange. So, uh, what do I feel about it? Well, I think that it's the uh, uh, I call it the I hypothesis because uh, because I think it is an uh, it, uh, it is an I. So uh, phonologically, I will call it a pharyngeal, and, phono and phonetically, it's the vocalic uh, vocalic correspondent of I, which is the a ah, and very pharyngealized. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, white is pronounced pow pow. To difficult is pronounced ray ray, and to cross the river is pronounced. Da, da. Uh, that's what I think. And why do uh, why do I think so? Well, uh, first uh, it satisfies the uh, the the throatiness because uh, you, you can't get really you, you really can't get more throaty than I. It's it's almost the most throaty uh, consonant available, and it also accounts for the R-like character. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, this subject is uh, curiously little treated in, in the literature, but if you ask anybody who works on Caucasian languages or on Arabic, and, and you ask them uh, 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 what do they think, the, for example, uh, in, in, in American English and in Mandarin Chinese, you have this kind of uh, 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 rhotic vowels, R, 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 and, you, uh, and, they, and they, they will tell you that they are not rhotic. The, the principle the principal uh, acoustic and uh, articulatory uh, element in those vowels is the is the pharyngeal construction, and uh, we 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 find a, we find uh, everywhere this kind of 
uh, this kind of affinity between verticness and, uh, and, and pharyngeal constriction. For example, uh, uh, in, the, in the Chinese transcription of Arabic, if you have an I, then it's rendered with, uh, with one of the erotic vowels in Chinese. And that's my theory about, uh, that's my current theory about the grade two entanglement. And let's just project it back to Hexi late middle Chinese. Well, uh, it means that a grade two has some kind of RTR quality and it has a pharyngeal medium. So my hypothesis is that the iron hypothesis is not only true for tangled, but it also works at least for Hexi late middle Chinese. Now the question is this, is this a grade two iron in Hexi Chinese influence or co-evolved or anything like that uh, by tangled? Or it's more widespread in Chinese, and in fact the tangled is influenced by the Chinese. Well, uh, we uh, on the on the nature of grade two in Chinese, basically we have two theories: the a theory and the u theory. Uh, the a theory is almost correct because if you look at modern dialects and if you look at uh, 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 all kinds of uh, information, it's clearly something like a. However, uh, uh, how do we get from ra? How do we get from ra to a? It's uh, very difficult. On the other hand, if we uh, use this uh, I hypothesis, and so if Chinese grade two is characterized by a strong pharyngalization, then it's very natural to have uh, the vowel a which is in fact the pharyngealized uh, counterpart of uh, associated with a grade 2. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we have this association uh, between retroflex uh, initials and a uh, in tangled. And it's also very projectable to Chinese because uh, not only in Hexi Middle Chinese, but uh, but also in the in the early North Mandarin uh, contemporary to Hexi Middle Ch to Hexi uh, to Hexi Middle Chinese, we have the same we have the same thing. So we have the uh, uh, whenever you have a ritual flex, a fricative or affricate uh, in grade three syllables, it is classified together with grade two. So not only original grade two is grade two, but in late middle Chinese or in early Mandarin, uh, or in fact in most kind of Chinese, uh, retroflex plus everything gives grade two, and we uh, we still have some uh, modern reflection of this in 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 dialects from standard Mandarin to Sino Vietnamese. Uh, uh, every every time, if you uh, the original retroflexes uh, cause a lowering of the vowel. I just put Cantonese here, but uh, it works for uh, any other uh, for uh, most other languages as well. So uh, I have argued for the for for the I as the true nature of grade two entanglement, and I project it to, into Chinese. But it's not. Uh, in fact, I, it turns out that it's not dialectal Chinese, but a uh, very common uh, Chinese. And uh, the only thing it gives us is that uh, the tangled treatment of uvularized r into this kind of i is borrowed from Chinese. Uh, why, uh, uh, why do I say it? Because in because in modern uh, because in modern uh, Changi languages you never find this treatment, this particular treatment. It's other it's either preserved or lost without any trace, or uh, uh, become some kind of real syllabic or it uh, um, or it uh, triggers the particular Tibetan sound change, which is uh, which brings gr to j. So, for example, for for the for the for the word sign, you have gr gr in northern Ma. In 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 Beigu Chang in northern northern Ma, which is the syllabic rhoticity treatment, and and we have the Tibetan treatment Zhi in in the in, in southern Ma. And this uh, this uh, if you look at the dialect map, the uh, the 
uh, the treatment are really scattered. So, so it means that uh, in most of the Warheimer, uh, in most of the Warheimer of, uh, of Changi, the, the, the medial art is preserved uh, uh, to, to, a very, to a very late date. So the, plausible, the most plausible scenario is that uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, well, uh, uh, all kinds of Chinese always had some kind of behind for, for grade two. And Tango uh, has borrowed it from, uh, ha has developed it uh, under the influence, uh, under the influence from Chinese. So uh, we're in our final slide. Uh, can we speak of a Hoesis Sprachbund? Uh, uh, I, I got interested in the in the in the Ayn question first because I I thought it I thought it would bring bring to to some very clear area thing so 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 uh, Hexi Chinese is influenced by Tango and Tango is influenced by Hexi Chinese. However, uh, well I think Tango is very strongly reshaped restricted. Hexi Chinese. However, Hexi Chinese is just uh, some some very generic kind of, uh, of uh, northwestern Chinese. Even if uh, the, the strange thing is that is this, you, uh, the only thing uh, the only way we can know anything about Hexi Middle Chinese is by Tango transcriptions. And if we just read the if we just listen to Tango's speaking very heavily Tango accent. Chinese. It just sounds like normal Chinese without any Tango accent. What does that mean? It means that Tango is so much reshaped by Chinese, so that uh, the so that the phonological systems are are almost completely compatible. You have the same kind of thing, for example, in 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 in, in Ando, where you have Mongolic languages uh, uh, with with Sinitic uh, phonology. So those people, if you if they speak Chinese, they they, they just speak it like normal Chinese. Uh, however, we also find uh, we also know that, for example, for the compression, uh, uh, for all kinds of compression, the, the dialect used to, the Tibetan dialect used to transcribe the Tango uh, have uh, shared the same sound changes. So uh, I think we have a typical situ uh, situation, uh, the, uh, which I call the the, the the Ottoman Balkan situation. You have the Balkan Sprachbund, where Balkan languages uh, coexist in in some kind of uh, 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 in some kind of Pax Ottomanica, and uh, they influence each other, and they are all influenced by Turkish. But Turkish is barely influenced by by uh, by Balkan languages, and I think we have the same thing. So um, so Tangut and local Tibetan influence each other. They are all influenced by Chinese, but Chinese is not influenced is not very much influenced by Tangut. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.